my friend. I'm glad to see you made it. For we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, he's alive. Today we're going to be going over again our Bible study of uh, Psalms chapter 9. If you're following along, last video or last week we did Psalm 8, today 9. Hopefully we'll get to 10 and, and 11 eventually. And if we get there today, uh, be God willing, you know. But if we don't, we'll, we'll make another video. And before we start there in, in chapters 9, I want to start Matthew chapter 3. And John the Baptist, baptizer or Baptist or Immerser is immersing people in water or dunking them in water and for the repentance of sin, right? And he says, I baptize in water for repentance. And John, in those days, you know, they didn't have many Bibles as we have today. You know, they had uh, to write a scroll or, or the Holy Bible or what we'd call the Old Testament or the Tanakh. It, it was very expensive in that day because everything was handwritten. And so you could only have so many copies. So there's a copy of the Torah, uh, the Bible, the Old Testament's there at the synagogues or the churches and you'd go there and read all day long what you want and memorize it. So John, when he's washing people in the water, he's washing people in the water of God. And that's what Paul says, we, we must be washed in the water of Jesus Christ, God's Word. God's Word. Right? We are washed in the water for Repentance sake. And repentance sake. In the water, in the word of God, we, we find out what sin looks like. We find out what the effects of sin looks like. We find out that the answers to our questions. Why is my life a struggle? Why does my life suck? What is going on in the world today? Why is there so many roadblocks? Why is there so many things put in, in my way? Right? All those answers are come through through the Bible. And we find that it's because we're, we're not listening to God. We're, we're trying to get God to, to bless our, our sin, our greed. Trying to get God to bless greed. Right? Get, trying to get God to Bless our heart's desire, our selfishness, things like that. And God won't do it. God will not bless anything that hasn't been ordained for a blessing. And you say, well, where do I find the blessings? In, in, in salvation and the sanctification of our lives, we are slowly or quickly or transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And there's where we find our blessings. And so that's the thing we got to come to find out that Jesus comes, he's, John says in chapter 3, verse 11, book of Matthew, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Right? Anything that's not kept up with repentance, with God's word. Right? It is subject to the fire, subject to punishment. You know, many people, many Christians, many people who believe Jesus Christ, right, play the lotto. <laughs> Great example of wanting to play the lotto and, oh, Heavenly Father lives in heaven. Glory, glory, glory be to you. Uh, give me the wisdom to choose the right numbers to win, you know, $350 million in the lotto. And then don't win it. Don't win it. Forty years later, two thousand, twenty thousand dollars later, still haven't won. 
And, and it's because that you're, you're praying to the wrong God. Praying to, to Satan who says, Satan says, if you bow down to me, I will give you all the glory and the riches of this world. And you're praying to God who, who is against that. And you wonder why. You know, you got to go to Satan if you want rewards of this world in the greatness of, of what we got here. And you can't go to God because God won't fulfill your greed. It's not going to bless you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to condemn you. It's going to uh, be bad for you. That's why Satan wants to reward you with the glory of this world. It rusts, it rots, it fades away. It can't love you. It can't care for you. You know? I know, and the example is if, if I won $350 million, I'm going to go open a hospital. No, I'm going to drive up and down town with my fingers hanging out the window. F you! That's why I don't get it. Because <laughs> God knows the, the true nature of a man. And money, the love of money, is the root of evil. So why would God give us the roots of evil? And he won't. And he won't. And so we see wicked and evil people be rewarded all the time, hitting the lotto, hitting great things and finding favor in this world full of friends, people who love them. And usually they love them because of their money, their things, and their stuff. But the person themselves, they have no compassion or care over. So we have to be washed in the Word of God. You know, the reality is, is you know, I wasn't a good father, but thank God I have a good son, but when I started reading the Bible and getting into the Word and the teaching instructions of God, I found out why I wasn't a good father, or why I wasn't a good friend. And, and that's what the Bible comes to, the fire comes to expose. It burns off the dross, it burns off the unbelief. Where does that happen? Where does that manifest it? Right? In our failures. They went there with John and confessed their sins, confessed their failures, confessed their errors. And then the Sadducees and Pharisees came and John said, Who told you to escape the wrath of God? You, you're a brood of vipers. A brood of vipers. And what was, what was their venom? That they had no sin. They had nothing to confess. Right? Until so they're burned in an unquenchable fire. Until you rise your eyes to God to see that all men have failure. And the reason we have failure is for learning. Nothing is done out of chance. All things are, are done for a purpose and a reason, and it's inside of, of God's plan. And God's plan is to get us to turn back to God, turn back to a sensible mind, good morals. Let's go to Psalm chapter 9. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. Right? Paul says the same thing. If there's anything I'm going to brag about, I'm going to brag about Jesus Christ. Because everything I've done has been nothing but dirty rags. You know, I, I could tell you all day long about all the works of, of David and all the things that David does, but in it there's nothing to be thankful for. Only to be thankful for Jesus Christ. You know, all of it is worthless. And so I thank God, I give thanks to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, for what He has done. 
and all his wonderful deeds. Right? Sometimes we're so focused on what I'm doing or what we're doing. Right? Like to tell everybody in town how great I am and, and all the wonderful works I do. Like to tell you about how, how much I love to tip waitresses. I love to to hand out money to the homeless or, or I love to tell you about all the wonderful things that I'm doing. Right? Me, me, me. Or all the wonderful things the church is doing. Right? But but we're not we're worshiping our gifts. The gift. And we're not worshiping the gift giver. I give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. With all my soul, with all my body. If I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak about him be because of the wonderful deeds he has done. And I'll be glad in that. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and they perish before your presence or because of your presence. For you have maintained my just cause. And this is David speaking through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, him and, and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, David, are, are one. One being, all speaking uh, of thing. And what is David saying? In my just cause. I did not stand up to say I'm going to be the king of Israel. God chose me. And my enemies stumbled and fell and, and died because they didn't believe that. Saul spent most of his life trying to kill David and, and couldn't kill him because didn't believe that God had chosen him. And, and this is what he's saying is, you have, you have held up my just cause. I never wanted to be the king, never asked to be the king, but, but God chose him. And, and the evidence what was his long life. Okay, if Samuel, who anointed him back when he was a child to be the next king, was a liar, David surely would have been devoured by a bear, a lion, Goliath, or any other foe that came his way. But he was king of Israel for 40 years. Died when he was in his 80s. Old man. And what do the people perish in God's presence? God chose him. And, and the, the evidence God chose him was God's protection over him. It says, for you have main, maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgments. You, have you ever done that? All of a sudden, I went from a creep, <laughs> a jerk, to, to a man who's now giving out righteous judgments. And you have done these things. Maybe you have done these things. Maybe you have deciphered the difference between right and wrong, and you've chosen what was right. David says, what was right? My faith in God, I give thanks to the Lord in his deeds. And he sits on the throne. Where's the throne? The kingdom of heaven is within, within your own heart. Right? You have rebuked the nations. How many people have stood up and, and, and I want to expose all the sin of the nations, rebuking their bad deeds, right? Where do you think Black Lives Matter comes from? The Holy Spirit that walks with us. All lives matter. All lives matter. Rebuking the nations. You have done this. You have made the wicked perish. All those things that the nations were doing, it really ticked me off, made me mad. 
And then I had to come to surrender and remind myself that, yeah, I'm nothing but a spit in the wind, right? I'm, I'm just nothing but wind. Because all things are subject to Jesus Christ, God. My rebuke had no effect. Nobody cared and nobody listened. But the wicked perished. Yeah, when, when I forgave it, what, what, what is unbelief perished? Not by my hand can this world be saved. Only by the hand of God. And I believed that in my wickedness, my unbelief perished. Through my failures, right? When we forgive, can we forget? When, when, the, when the enemy and the abuse or, or whatever they have done in our lives, whatever trauma or terror they have brought to our lives, it is when the wicked have perished that there is no longer a memory. Greatest gift or power is forgiveness. And we got to put forgiveness to action. <laughs> it means we have to forget. You know, it's hard when, when we're living life and I forgive all that sin in the past. Right? And five, ten years later comes along and somebody does something and you, you, you remember that sin from five, ten, whatever years ago. And you always use that as a weapon, a sword. An arrow to fire, a fiery dart to into your loved one or, or whoever it may be, that person's hearts, because you know that, that I've been saving this one. Remember when you did that? <laughs> you got the checklist out. Yeah, you could never change. Because I remember back then. Yeah, I forgave you, but. I'm going to use that against you. Every time it comes up, every time I'm agitated or I'm mad, boom, it's not forgiveness. And it hasn't perished. Right? We're still working on that. Yeah, I bought it out, their name forever and ever. Still working on that. <laughs> Blotting out their, their name. Forever and ever. The power they have over our lives. Right? Nothing can change the fact that God has chosen you or chosen me or chosen us. David. Once you've been chosen, you're chosen. Chosen to forgive. Chosen to move on. Chosen to, to better your life. All those things come through through faith in, in God. The enemy came to an, an end in everlasting ruins. Their cities you rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. Everything causes sin. And the kingdom of heaven is gone. The desire to sin is gone. Right? There's no murderers in heaven. There's no slanderers in heaven. There's no adulterers in heaven. There are no sinners in heaven because sin doesn't exist. It's not on the menu. Like I have a, I'll go to the restaurant and I have a menu, and, and, uh, and here on earth is sin. And yeah, give me a fat portion of that. Love it. But but in heaven it's not on the menu. I can't choose it. It's not that God has taken away our free will. It just ain't on the menu. It ain't a, a choice any longer. Because all death and the causes of death, which is sin, is completely removed. And that all comes through faith in Jesus Christ. He says, but the Lord is enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice. And he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the people with uprightness. Right? And he's enthroned and he's enthroned forever. What can our faith go through? 
can go through a lot, right? Especially when we are chosen by God. God chooses us because I know what your faith can endure. Anything put in our way. Our righteousness is, is our credit to believing in Jesus. We, we have no hope except for our hope is in Jesus. What is our hope? That, that Jesus has atoned for our sin. Outside of that, we have no hope. We have no hope. Jesus sin, sits enthroned in, in our heart. He's going to turn the tablets of Noah's law into flesh, and God will write that on your heart, being enthroned into your life, into your heart. Same way Jesus Christ is enthroned in heaven. We sat in heavenly realms with Christ. With Christ. Christ sits in, in the realms of sin with us. God's justice is, is seen. Those who believe, believe because God gave you the ability to receive us, receive himself. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed and a stronghold in the times of trouble. When we're weak, Paul says, I begged God three times to take away this storm from my side, this messenger of the devil. And Jesus' reply was, My grace is sufficient for you. Paul, when you're weak, when you're unable to, to conquer Satan, the devil, I'm strong. Because God can do all things that man cannot do. You cannot save yourself, but, but I can. Jesus, with great tears and, and weeping and, and crying for, from the depths of his soul, asked God, is there any other way? Because if there was another way, let's do that way. Yet not my will, but your will, and, and there is no other way. And Jesus says, well, uh, we will drink this cup together. Death. The wages of sin are death. And all will die. Some people die in unbelief, in a whole family of unbelief, and they're the saddest people on earth at the funeral. But we have hope. And we won't share it in their weeping or the tears because our hope is in Jesus Christ who has redeemed them. And if he redeemed them, what does it say to us who are willing to live with him now? I remember when I was in school, I, I turned my life to Jesus as a child. Right? And I'm not here to talk about my deeds, but the deeds of Christ. And how great Christ is. And I was baptized 12 years old at my own demand, my own free will. And then later I'm a senior in high school. 18 years old in high school. And I go and I'm still in gym class, right, in high school. <laughs> Even as a senior. Love athletics and gym and, and <clears throat> have one role, one role. And the teacher says, you get an A. If this boy Dan, and his name is Daniel, this boy Dan never speaks to me. He better never come over and talk to me, bother me, ask me a question or anything. He goes, Whatever you do when you walk in the room, your job is to take care of Dan. Easy. Dan he is, uh, is autistic. I, I, I was a... Uh, athlete of school, very popular person, uh, star athlete for baseball and football, captain of the team, uh, all kinds of things. Everybody knows me. You take care of Dan, the, the autistic guy. So, so every day I'd go to gym class and I had to be Dan's best friend for an hour. 
right? And, and being the most popular kid in school, Dan loved it. Dan loved the recognition. Dan loved being able to say one time in life, I'm normal. I'm just like those guys. I'm a friend with one of the most popular people in school, and I did it. But I did it with a grudge in my heart. I was ashamed of what the other kids might think of me being the best friend to Dan. That's the best I could do. Sure, I could do it, but I did it grudgingly. And my faith and my hope is that, that Dan had a friend, but that Jesus Christ could have mercy on me, the sinner, who couldn't accept Dan as God's son. Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me, and who is me? The one you're persecuting, that boy, is me. And if you're ashamed of him, will I not be ashamed of you in front of God and all the hosts of heaven? And sometimes we wonder why is life the way it is, and it's because we don't believe God. That God chose Dan. That that one who has been afflicted, and not just afflicted, but it's going to be afflicted his whole life. You don't grow out of autism. If you're autistic at 14, you're autistic at 30, at 40, at 50. You're autistic when, when your mom and dad die, and your caretakers are gone. And, and the good works of God being ordained before we came was at least he, he gave a, a decent guy to be his friend. And even though I did it grudgingly, because I knew Jesus, I was the guy's friend. But I wish today I would have did it with joy in my heart. And, and I could change. And that's the fire, and that unquenchable fire, until you change. Or recognize my love for these people, I will punish you. And I will torment you. And I will bring them into your lives every day, and they will become a thorn to you. Because you're, you're rejecting God's love for them. Jesus says, my love is sufficient for you, Paul. Is your love sufficient for them? Those who have been forgiven great amount of sin love a lot. Right? He goes on to say, The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. Right? A stronghold in times of trouble. Why do we have trouble and trials in our life? Why can't I win the lotto? Because I'm a stronghold in your weakness. And if I gave you everything, what, what am I? Right? Because we all love the gift and not the giver of the gifts. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, have not forgotten, forsaken those who seek you. Right? The Lord puts their trust in Him, or we put our trust in Him. And He doesn't forget that. Jesus says, if you seek me, you will find me. <laughs> you will find me. If you're seeking a friend, you, you will find a friend. If you're seeking help, you will find help. If you're seeking redemption, you will be redeemed. If you're seeking to be healed, he will heal you. If you're seeking to be fed, he will feed you. If you're seeking to be comforted, he will comfort you. He says, Do 
sing praises to the Lord, who sits enthroned in Zion. Where was Zion? The city where David lives. This haven't been called to Israel there, the holy city here on earth, but to Zion, the city where David lives. David is enthroned at the right hand of God with Jesus Christ in the city where he lives. Not where he died. Jerusalem is the city where they died. They're on earth, the city of peace. In their death, they made peace. God made peace with them. Made peace with you, peace with us. He's, he is enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. His deeds. And the best of what David got, no matter what good deed or anything, there is no good deed or good work. There's a, a time, a point, a, a place and, and a season or whatever where, where God has ordained you to be in a place where, where Dan could receive God's love in a world that rejected him. And you could provide the love of God by being Dan's friend. Nothing to do with David, because David is a creep. I'm a human being, just a man. And the best a man can do is what men do. But what how God ordains life in order to, to project, to manifest, his love in a world where, where people need it the most. I think if I was the President of the United States or the King of Israel, my whole Congress would, would be people of Down Syndrome. They don't know greed. They don't understand what greed is. They don't, it doesn't, if you want a, a great government, hire them. They're they a fully functioning mind, but they look different. And, and yeah, you know, have you ever been publicly humiliated or, or felt ashamed? And, and these people, you look right at them, and, and obviously there's a word, Down syndrome, because they're different. And they all look the same, and, and they know they're different. And they just want to be like the rest of us. Those people know love. Those people know God, in a way we, we could only imagine. We should never sell them short. We could learn from them. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. And if we had a life of no affliction, We certainly might not be crying to the right God. Because this is the God who hears those cries. Them who are being afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See, my affliction from those who hate me. Oh, you who lift me up from the gates of death. Right? David speaking of Jesus. And who has lifted him up from the gates of death? Me, you, us who have hope in, in, in the resurrection. Hope in, in his salvation. See my affliction? What is my affliction? Sin. I'm afflicted by sin. Even though I can do something good, I can't do it without a grudge in my heart. I'm afflicted by sin. See, my affliction, my weakness, my inability to stop, that's where I'm strong. Because forgiveness is the greatest power on earth. Sometimes I've got to forgive myself. See, those who hate me, Jesus says, don't be surprised that the world hates you. 
He did me first. Right? It says, O oh, you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I may rejoice in your salvation. Right? It's not about the salvation that comes through the works of men. No, we, we obey Jesus because we love him with all our heart, wholeheartedly. What do we obey? We, we accept and receive the forgiveness, the washing of our sins, and of it comes the confession. Probably could have made a great impact in that kid's life had I not been so grudgingly. Because outside the gym, when we were walking up and down the hallways, I, I ignored the guy. Ignored the guy. Disowned him. Sinned against God. I remember that same kid, Dan, is driving down the street in a car. And I'm like, Jesus, what's this world coming to? They give Dan a driver's license? I mean, Dan was, was special, but Dan wasn't all there. And how do you give Dan a driver's license? So I'm telling everybody at the baseball team, baseball practice, hey, did you guys see Dan driving down the street? Can't believe he has a driver's license. He doesn't. He stole my car and crashed it, <laughs> says my buddy. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Shoot. <laughs> it was like, you know, Dan being Dan. And I made a choice in, in your salvation, in, in his salvation, his gift to us. Life. The nations have sunk in the pit that they have made. In the net they hit, their own foot has been caught. We see that in our world. Right? It's talking to us. What's the problem with the world today? Where does all this rioting come from? Where does all this black lives matter, white lives matter, Asian lives matter, all lives? Where is all this coming from? Unwilling to, to recognize the love of things. Easy life, good stuff. This is the will of God. The will of God is that we would love each other. We would love our families. We would have the, the strength of the fortitude to forgive sin to the point of forget, annihilation, God. To forgive our enemies, to love our enemies. But we don't do it. We sink into our own pit. We love things so much. We have no compassion for people anymore. Or their pains, or their sufferings, or their afflictions. And the only hope you have if you're poor, if you're in the United States of America, the only hope you have if you don't have insurance is God's salvation. Death. Because you can't abuse me anymore. You can't try to steal my faith anymore. You, you can't be bogged down with guilt and shame anymore. Although I live with Christ in my death, I gain the most. I'm free. From the afflictions of sin. My own sin. And the world's sin. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are, are snared in the works of their own hands. Ensnared. Trying to save yourself. All works, good and bad, have been condemned. There's only one work God will see. And that's a thank offering. Thank you, Jesus Christ, 
for having mercy on me, the, the sinner. Right? And he made his judgment himself known. This is the living example. I want you to live according to this example. Jesus Christ is the example. And what's the judgment? We, we choose not to do it. And if I'm forced to do it by my gym teacher, I would do it begrudgingly. What if it was God? Do I do it grudgingly then? And so you're being executed is the judgment. You're being punished because you don't believe God. That Dan is his son. Or whoever we may be, you. The wicked shall return to us Sheol, the neither world, right? Sheol is the neither world to the grave, to the, the I don't know world. Before we were born, we neither sinned nor did good. Going back to, to a neither world, right? And the wicked shall return to the neither world. All the nations that forgot God. All the nations, all the people, anybody who... Rejected God, forgot Him, turned away from God. We'll be punished, and God says, I find no pleasure when you withdraw from Him. And He will give to you what you want. God will give you what you fear the most. If you fear going to hell the most, if you fear being punished the most, God will give that to you. If you think God's coming to burn people and destroy people with that unquenchable fire, it's you he's going to burn with the unquenchable fire. Until you believe. Burning off the dross, burning off the lies. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. We, we feel the needy, the poor, feel forgotten, feel unloved, the abused, the afflicted. We, we feel like crap when, when we're being walked on, but you will not be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish. Everybody who puts their hope in Jesus Christ shall not perish. They will be saved. Arise, O Lord. Let not men prevail. Oh, let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord. And let the nations know that they are but men. Selah. They are but men. And every time I try to to brag or, or boast about me and my good deeds and my good behavior and my self-righteousness. God, God is there to, to remind me, always. Remember Dan? And, and that's why that happened in the beginning of life. Thank God it happened in the beginning of life because I could look back and say, I remember Dan. And God always says, but, but Dan's the one I loved. Didn't you love him? Whatever you do to the least, you do it to me. Who are you persecuting? Me. Who are you holding a grudge against? Me, says God. Let us end there and get to chapter 10. Heavenly Father, our Father who lives in heaven, in heavenly realms, who's enthroned into the city of Zion, this place where David lives. We ask for your mercies. Forgive us for our trespasses. 
for our unbelief, for our sins. We have forgiven our brothers and sisters in the same way you have forgiven us. We are willing to love them in the way you are loving us. We're willing to be a part of a new friendship, a new relationship, as you have created with us. Give us today our daily bread. Be our source of life. Be our source of hope. Be our source of healing. Be our source of joy. Be our reason to say thank you. Father, we love you with all our heart. And we are willing to be a part of your glory. Free us from the bondages of our own sins, from our own errors. Deliver us from the hands of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. <laughs> See you next time. Sing and hallelujah, glory and hallelujah. Running every since I made a start, I made a start. Oh, he's a brighter, makes my burden lighter. Jesus, love just above us, so in my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm singing.